this morning? I am relatively well, LK, uh, here in downtown Toronto. Um, we had gone up north for eight weeks to flee the city um, and came back this week and discovered that it is uh, loud and dirty and risky. So we're just waiting to go back up this weekend. You're amazing, Bob. You are Mr. Out in the Wild, Mr. Traveling. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, my good friend Bob Ramsey is an inspiration. Met him a few years ago through a good friend, Jillian Smith. And very humbly, he approached me and said, now that we've met, your life is about to change. And he was not wrong. He was not wrong. Uh, Bob Ramsey is a prodigious writer. The president CEO for Ramsey Talks and Ramsey Travel and a lot of things that nourish the soul and shake things a bit because Bob, that's what he does. He does things differently and amazingly. Uh, Bob puts together these events or pre-COVID, these wonderful events that with spectacular, spectacular keynote speakers, Bob, uh, Ramsey Talks and uh, Anyway, I thought uh, I would have a conversation with him. He's a good friend, smart, and never gives up. So Bob, uh, tell us a little bit more about you and how you're doing in this pandemic. Well, um, I am, first of all, I am, I am 70 years old and my wife is 77. And, and why are those two numbers relevant? Well, because by some rights, uh, I, should, I should be uh, retired. And my wife um, should absolutely be retired, but she's a very active doctor. Um, and we, our view is that we are going to keep on doing what we're doing until we can't. And whether there's a pandemic or not, and we will just keep going. Uh, we are not the retiring types. So to be forced into a kind of retirement was was very, very unsettling for me and for my wife, Jean. Um, she, really, she really hasn't stopped because she's moving her entire medical practice online. So she does telemedicine. And like doctors all over the world, she was, she was doing a little telemedicine, um, just kind of dabbling at it. But now that the pandemic came along, boy, is she having to learn how to become expert very quickly. And, and I think that's, that's one of the big changes we've seen. It's interesting that you mentioned Ramsey Talks and Ramsey Travel. So, so Ramsey Talks are live events and, and Ramsey Travels are what we call group travel for people who don't do group travel. So guess what? There are no more live events and there is no more travel. And so I sat there thinking, hmm, what am I going to do? So with, with the Ramsey Talks, we've moved them online. Now the entire world is going online. And, and it's interesting how, how a threat can create an opportunity. And I mean, we've, we've heard that phrase everywhere and we see it everywhere and it landed on me. So my Ramsey talks were big events, 500 people held at the Four Seasons, world caliber speakers. Now that's all gone. Um, and, and now they're held online and, and we're charging much less of course, but guess what? Because they're held online, the world is our market. Before our market was uh, Toronto, you would have to go to the event. Now it can be, we can market to anybody in the quote unquote English speaking world. So we're sitting around looking at ourselves kind of predicting doom and there is a gigantic new market sitting right in front of us. So that was, that was one kind of strangely liberating thing around Ramsey Talks. And the other thing around Ramsey Talks is that if we do more of them online, I don't have to stand up in downtown Toronto 
and be there. I can be on a mountaintop in New Zealand. I can be up at my cottage. I can be in the kitchen uh, in your home and I can do a Ramsey talk. Ramsey travels. I'm a bit of a gentleman farmer in the travel business. So we, we go to places like the Fogo Island Inn. And so we had to shut down all of our trips there. We were taking 50 friends hella hiking in the Rockies this summer. We had to shut all that stuff down. And we're just kind of redefining what, what the travel means. So it's a huge period of um, kind of threat and opportunity at the same time. So being forced to reinvent yourself right. on a dime. Which is not, and, and that's something I've always loved about you, your, your attitude and, and your can-do approach to life and age is not an issue. And, uh, and, and that's fantastic that you're taking this as an opportunity and assuming that it's the new now. Uh, we're also thinking, you know, it's sure it's COVID and it'll go away and eventually, eventually one day there will be a vaccine, not possibly, maybe, we don't know. Some people say two weeks, some people say two years. Uh, there's everything in, in there and all these theories. The one I would strongly uh, recommend is don't do the Clorox one. That's not a good idea. But um, but you, you see the opportunity, you keep going. We decided to think that COVID is over and this is the way we do business now and then how can we deliver value to our clients and you're doing the same um what what tell me a little bit about your your around your playground blog I love it well so I am my main skill is that I am a writer um and I have a little I have a little sign on a, you know, a magnet on our stove that I've had for 30 years that says, we'll write for food. In other words, I, you know, pay me and I will write for you. Um, and it's only in the last couple of years that I've been writing for me. My, my memoirs were coming out on, on November the 7th, and I was in the final editing of that, and COVID hit, and now they're coming out next year, okay? But I sat there and I thought, okay, so I'm a writer. Why don't I just write and see where it goes? Why don't I start a blog? And, and I tried to do a blog before, but I was so distracted and busy with other things that I never had time to focus on it. So first of all, I, I thought, well, why don't we call it the playground? And, and I did and I sent out my first blog and five people emailed to me and said, how dare you use the word plague in a, in a title in anything to do with this because it isn't, right? Well, guess what? It is, right? So, but, but that was a matter of timing. And, and, and what's extraordinary is in the last eight weeks, our view of what's real and what the future is kind of changes every day, right? So, so what was right seven weeks ago is proven to be completely wrong now, right? So we just kind of have to get used to that. But writing the blog. So this is a blog that I write five days a week. It's 700 words. It's about anything that sort of catches my attention around the pandemic. Um, and it's sent out to the 5,000 people on my email list. And what it's become is a source of enormous fulfillment for me. Uh, and the other thing is, it gets me out of bed in the morning. So it, it, it has a very kind of useful, every day, except on weekends, I have to get up, think of something, write something, send it back and forth, right? And, and just that daily discipline really means a lot to me. And guess what? Now having done 55 of them, um, writing 750 words on just anything is something I can do very easily. I find it's a, it's a, it's living your purpose, doing what you love. And I find it's very authentic and, and, and really heartfelt where you say where your fears are, where your anger is, where 
people's minds are. And I mean, obviously you have years and years of experience and, and there's something about the, the way you write. There's, there's some humor, very fine humor in it that, that keeps us coming back. And, uh, and I really enjoy them. I, I oh. really enjoy them. Thank you. There's, it's, it's, it's interesting writing about your own fears, I'll tell you, um, which is simply a formalized, very big form of talking about your own fears. And so I remember one of my early blogs was called, We're All Gonna Die, We're All Gonna Die. And, and I wrote about my fears. And, and it's interesting at the time, um, I was sleeping... Uh, 15 hours a day, which is completely unheard of for me. I, my, I am, my relationship with sleep is that I am starved of it. I never get enough of it. And now suddenly it was kind of, kind of uh, smothering me. And I was, I was writing about these kind of changes and also hearing something in the far distant corner of the world and how could it affect us where we were up at our cottage and it was kind of preoccupying me. Anyway, all to say, um, I wrote this blog and, and, and I, I read it to Jean beforehand. She said, well, isn't that nice? And again, I got lots, so I got lots of great feedback, like, like you, you liked it, right? But I also got emails saying, Bob, don't say that. Don't say that. You are supposed to be funny and strong. That's who you are, right? You are an inspiration for me. And, and you frighten me when you talk about being afraid. And, and I just sort of sat there and went, what the heck? Um, and, and my view of that is, look, I'm 70 years old. If I'm afraid, I can raise my hand and say I'm afraid and and I don't care. Oh, and, 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 and let's not forget, this is coming from someone who already died. Just right, saying. Right. <laughs> there, there is that. There is that. There is <laughs> there is that part, yes. Oh, whoops. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's another story. Right. But, but it, it, it is, I think, uh, if the, something has happened with this uh, COVID thing is that it has made us all human. It has really shown our, our vulnerabilities, ranging from, of course, the health scare and what's gonna happen, is my family okay? And have I done things right? Have I done everything that I can do? Um, all the midlife crisis are, are flourishing like never before. Uh, and, but at the same time, uh, it's, it's for business owners and people who initially clamp down and, and shut down and, you know, it's Armageddon and slowly, you know, and it, what time seems to be all weird right now because it's kind of like, it's, it's flying by quickly, but it's kind of like on standstill. So we're kind of, I, to me, it's a big, big, big enigma what's going on and it's really messing with everyone's head. Um, what, what, are you still in business? Yes, I'm still in business. So, so right away, my, my um, long-suffering business manager, who's been my business manager for more than 40 years, uh, we got on the phone and we applied for all the, all the assistance because we lost 80% of our work in one week. Right? Um, and um, my overhead was not much except for staff. Uh, because frankly, I can operate my business out of a Starbucks. So we got that assistance. And I, I have to say, um, certainly compared to the U.S. and Britain, the speed with which the Canadian government offered assistance and paid it was astounding. I was completely shocked by, by this and, and thrilled that I live in a country where, where that can happen. Uh, but in terms of my business, um, uh, people hire me to write uh, speeches, for example, but guess what? People aren't giving speeches. Um, they hire me to teach writing, and I, of course, was doing that live, and now I'm doing it online. I'm doing it online for big corporations, and, and it's interesting how, how change happens. So 
I sent out an email to 100 people I know who work in big companies saying, I offer these corporate writing courses online. I've been doing this online for the last couple of months. Uh, and eight people emailed me back and said, do you offer these courses individually? I'm not with a large corporation, although I was, and, and can we do that? So now suddenly we are deep into planning how to, how to promote individual writing courses, right? For much, much less money than the corporations would pay. Uh, and, and so if, you, if, if circumstances force you to think new ways about deeply entrenched stuff that you are involved in, guess what? You may come up with new things. I should be retired. At one level, I can retire, but I'm the kind of person, as is my wife, Jean, who if we were to retire, we would, we would die. Um, because we are, we, we, we do lots of stuff all the time. And to be forced to do nothing can be a frightening thing, but it can be a liberating thing as well. So tell me, in terms of the pandemic, how how has this how has this time changed your views around money, around work, around where to live? So so first of all, I learned that um, that I I have been spending a lot of money on, and I won't even call them lifestyle things, but they were the money was just going out my pocket without me being aware of it. Um, until I, I really had to focus on it, right? So things like, um, you know, online newspaper uh, subscriptions, uh, Equifax, the credit rating service. Uh, and my, again, my business manager and I went through, like we had something like, like 45 automatic payments being run through my credit card for stuff. Yeah. yeah? Um, Eating, at, uh, eating out at uh, restaurants, and I'm not talking about sort of big special occasion meals or fancy restaurants. I'm simply talking about uh, going down to the food court in the middle of the day, right? So, so those things add up. And I, I've forgotten who the, who the money advisor was who said, you know, if you didn't go to Starbucks and spend $3 a day, uh, you could and you started doing this at age 20, you could have half a million dollars in your retirement account by the time you retired, right? So it's that kind of, the, the amounts were so small that I was unaware of them until I had to be aware of them. And, and so that was, a, that was a huge realization around money. Um, and, and the other side of that is I don't need as much as I thought I did to live the life I want to live. So that was, that was a big surprise at a time when I was incredibly anxious around money because I'd lost 80% of my clients, right? What am I going to do? And, and one of the other things is my wife and I love to travel a lot and, and when I realized just how much money we spend on travel. Uh, and now it's not that we, we aren't, it's that we can't. So this was a, these were kind of multiple shocks to the system with a little comfort thrown in. For the last five years, um, our, our private banking manager, uh, has taken us three times through a, a financial planning exercise and three times with the insurance person and the tax person and the bank manager all sitting around the table, they have said, you will be fine. And three times I would go down the elevator at the end of the meeting with Gene and say, I don't believe them. I simply don't believe them. <laughs> and you know what? They were right, they were right. But um, when, you're, when you're a drunken sailor 
and you are spending like a drunken sailor, that's likely not the time that you're going to listen to people say, you know what, you'll be fine. It's when, it's when you're forced to kind of stop all that, that, that it kind of becomes true. But a friend once said to me that um, when, you, when you get to be a certain age, and I would say that age would be 60, not 70, uh, your whole goal in life is just to stay in the game. And, and I thought that was really interesting. The game as you define it, right? Just give me a purpose, make me a use, make, make some use. Don't send me out on the ice flow just yet. And, and I think that's incredibly important now to, to be of use in however you define it is, is, is what you want. And, and now is, as, as I'm really realizing is this, incredibly fertile time for new thinking. So, so here's an example. I am a city boy. I love living in the city. I'm speaking to you from our condo at Pape and Danforth. We also have a place in the country on Georgian Bay to which we fled nine weeks ago. And my view of the world was, um, live in the city, love the city lifestyle, and go to the cottage. And when we're older, maybe we'll go for three days a week as opposed to two days a week. That was the extent of my geographic sort of psyche map. Now, that's all changed. Now I'm saying, boy, it's great up there. Um, I'm, I'm never gonna leave the city entirely, but maybe we can live most of the year up there and come down into the city. So that, that shift as to what's more important is, you know, sort of reflects a gigantic shift in my own mind. Right? So, so that's, what's, that's what's happening. Yeah, and I, and I think everybody's going through a very, like we're forced into analyzing our own values and what's important to us and what is it that we truly value and want to perpetuate and continue and get back to one way or the other. So it wouldn't, in your case with your traveling, it wouldn't surprise me if you come up with a, a combo of Jean Marines, uh, gathers forces with Ramsey travel and they decided to cycle all the way to Fogo Island and rediscover a new glamping version of so come join us you know right. you you've right. kayaked around Manhattan you right. get in helicopters and do strange stuff right. so so I, I can't wait to see the uh, the next chapter evolving and implemented for Bob Ramsey and his adventures. Uh, Bob, an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, making the morning happy. I look forward to reading you again and um, stay well. Thank you so much. Okay. It was great to chat with you this morning.